Book sales are an interesting endeavor. A lot of authors are out there publishing, self-publishing, doing whatever they can to get their name out there, to get book sales, to make a living off of this creative pursuit of writing. Uh, it is a challenge to get book sales. The reality is, if you could sell, oh, I don't know, a thousand copies of a book, you're doing really well. You're actually doing quite well. Yeah, because a lot of people can't even get past 100 book sales. And I've struggled with this. I've, I've come out with 60 books and there's plenty there that don't have any sales at all. And I struggle to, to get those sales. And my first book sale came from a conversation I had with someone. They just liked my personality and they checked out my profile and saw that I had a book and they bought it. But you might not be so lucky. You see, you might not have all those conversations, especially when you're just trying to be creative and create books and you don't really want to spend a bunch of time having all these conversations with people. Well, I mean, you can do advertising, you can do PR, you can do guest blogging. I mean, there's a number of different ways to do it. You probably have a strategy, social media. You've got, let's assuming here that you have a massive marketing strategy behind your book. You, you have a launch strategy. You have everything properly optimized in terms of SEO for the book. I mean, you, you've done all the different pieces and yet your book still isn't being picked up. And it's tough to persevere, right? It is tough to be motivated to sell your book, to feel confident about your book when you've crossed all the T's and dotted all the I's and yet you still can't get that first sale. Well, you know, you can look at the content, but the reality is if nobody's bought the book, then something's falling apart at the cover. Something's falling apart at the surface. I believe you could take any book and sell it if you put the right marketing strategy in place, you put all of the steps together, you can sell any book. Of course, you might not have repeat customers, but any book can be sold. It's just, are you willing to persevere? Are you willing to stay true to your topic? Are you willing to stay true to the mission? And the reality is you might need to have those social conversations somewhere. You might need to actually start talking, right? You might need to start talking to a bunch of people. You might need to have all of these different conversations so that you can spark interest because interest will result in desire and action to buy. And you need that perseverance to go beyond just creating the book. You need to go beyond that. You need to actually go and sell your book and do it in a way that's authentic to you. Now, us authors, we're not salespeople. I, most of us aren't salespeople, unless, unless we are talking about maybe sales content in our book. Well, then maybe we are. I mean, yeah, a lot of a lot of authors are perhaps introverted. A lot of them are, and they struggle with the idea of selling themselves, selling their story, communicating their story to someone. Because you can have the most amazing product in the world, but if nobody sort of hears something, I mean, you need to distribute it, right? I mean, where are you putting your book? And are you sharing it enough? Are you persevering through the no's? You're going to get a lot of no's. You might get some yeses, but you're gonna get a lot more no's and rejections, right? Whether you're trying to find an agent or a publisher, it, it just doesn't, it, all, all the way through these steps, you need to persevere and keep going. 
At what point do you stop persevering? Well, you might stop persevering when you feel like you have zero ounces of confidence in what it is you're putting out into the world. And you don't see any way of getting any confidence around that book, then that might be the point at which you sort of go back to the round table and revisit what it is you're doing. And that's always a very difficult conversation to have with yourself. Very difficult indeed, because if you don't have the interest to persevere, why would anyone want to buy your content? Why would anyone want to tune in and check out what, you, what it is you do? Because you're not persevering. You don't believe in your book enough to get it out there into the world, or you don't believe it enough to get people on board to help you put it out into the world. Yeah, I mean, you might need to get resources to help you out on this process. Typically, a creative person is not a salesperson. Typically. And they need to surround themselves with a salesy type person. A business person is maybe not a technical person. So if someone's starting a startup, they might need a technical person if they're a business person. You see, there's always like a compliment to help push things forward. You see, I'm debating whether I'm a promoter or whether I'm just a builder. I'd actually say I'm a builder. I'm not so big on promoting my things. This is where perhaps having somebody on my team who can shout at the rooftops, who can really sell my voice, that could perhaps come in handy as a complementary aspect. You, you have to look at your strengths and weaknesses and figure out where you can keep going and where things are getting in the way. And you look at those obstacles and you say, oh, what do I need? What are, what are the pieces to, to get past that? You see, in order to build a roof on the Lego house, you you need a, a foundation, perhaps a square foundation. That's how you're going to build the roof on top of the house. But if you don't have that foundation and you just have a roof, well, it's not really a place to live. So what you want to do as an author is make it a place to live. Okay, so you create the book. What are the steps to ensure that you confidently deliver to the world for the years and years to come? You know, a lot of people just create one book. One book, right? This is their, their book for their life, okay? And for the next 50 to 70 years, they go around promoting this one book because this one book speaks volumes about something important in the world and it's caught on and it's sold millions of copies. That one book is, is the life of that person. That person will be able to persevere because, well, it's caught on. But for the next 50 to 70 years, they'll just they'll be behind their book because people are speaking about how important the book is. So, I mean, obviously, a meaningful book is important. A book that's so meaningful to you that you're willing to share it, that's obviously important. Because I look at, like, car salesmen. If a car salesman loves those cars that they're trying to sell, they'll be more likely to sell more. Because it, it, it's something meaningful to them. There's something about that car that they absolutely love. And they just want to keep talking about it. So they're perseverant in terms of their role as a salesperson. If you made something that you are truly proud of, you will be able to persevere through the difficult times and get through this. Now, I struggle with this. Like I struggle with perseverance because I like building. Okay, I like to build for sure. I don't know if I'm much into promotions. And here I am, a marketer here, talking to you about promoting things. I like to build content pieces, and I don't really want to tell people about it. I'm kind of reclusive in that sense, right? And where I would probably be best served is by running running consistent 
advertising that I don't have to deal with too, too much. So I build out perhaps a process so that I'm constantly selling something, okay? And that's probably the best way for me to build out my brand. I'm just sort of thinking out loud here. But a builder is okay. I mean, an architect is okay if that's who you are. Authors are primarily builders because they're building words. They're putting words together into a cohesive sentence, paragraph, chapter, book, a whole book that they've built. They're builders. They're not necessarily people who can push out the book into the world. That's okay, but they need to get the people in place to do that. Now, the concern with this whole book sales thing is, is that a book is a low-priced object. You're looking at something that's between $2 to $20. It's a low-priced product, so it's very difficult to spend money to make money off of book sales, right? It is very difficult. Also, there's an oversaturation of books. So it's very scary if you depend on just your books alone. I've talked about revenue streams, different revenue streams. Uh, author is, I believe, an entrepreneur. So an author would be best served to figure out the different revenue streams that they can also grow and work on these revenue streams. The reality is um, the book sales might not be sustainable enough for the author. I mean, say you can get 5,000 book sales in a year. You think that's going to be enough for one book? That's not going to be enough. You need more book sales than that. You need significantly more book sales. You are not going to live off of 5,000 book sales in a year. That's just not the reality. Unless your book is priced at like $40. Because if you do the math, you've got a bunch of royalties that you have to pay out to Amazon and everyone else. Anyone else you involve in this process, you have to pay them. So think about that. Think about what you need to do to make sure that your book sales are profitable. Because then you'll just get discouraged otherwise. This is why people resort to social media to get their books out there into the world. Because that's sort of how they can sort of persevere, get a few sales here and there. But is it sustainable? Is it something you can grow? This is why beyond social media, how do you kind of create buzz? Collaborations, guest posts? Email marketing, the email list is powerful. There's so much here that you need to do. And if you do it, and you stick with it, persevere, you'll see some book sales. A dangerous approach is if you depend on these sales, that your life depends on these sales. That's a very dangerous approach. You do not want to go down this road. You want to have other assets in place so that you're not dependent on these sales. You'll come across as needy, desperate, and no one will want to buy your book if you're highly dependent on these sales. Don't go down that road. Be authentic. Don't be all sweaty thinking, I need that next book sale. You should never have to depend on something for revenues. That's a very dangerous road and creates a level of anxiety that very difficult to overcome. So you want to create and you want to promote properly and authentically and genuinely for you, but also not dependent on those book sales. Those who kind of persevere consistently, who can consistently execute on some sort of mechanism for marketing they'll see something happen over time, but they just have to keep going. And a lot of people just fall short. A lot of people do, and including myself. I've done it as well. I've fallen short in a number of occasions, and it's always this feeling of regret, like, why did I give up too soon? And you don't want to do that. You want to persevere. 
It's taken me several months in my initial journey of being able to sell books. Yeah, it's taken a long, long time to get those initial reviews, to get those initial sales. And I was struggling. And I still do struggle with a lot of these book sales. I'm finding that it's not an easy avenue to make income from. It isn't. It's not an overnight thing. But that's okay. Because there are a number of different pieces in play, right? A number of different aspirations that I'm working towards. And piece by piece, it'll all fall together. All through perseverance. That's all I've got for today. Thanks for tuning in. Till next time. Toodles.